Let me show you five hidden useful Photoshop features that you probably don't know. By the way, I will be working with my MSI Creator A16 AI Plus laptop. More details on it later. Also, if you see a hidden feature you enjoy, please hit the like button and subscribe. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Let's get started. Since Photoshop CC 2015, you can turn any PSD into a Photoshop template by simply adding a T to the file extension. When you open a PSD T file, Photoshop automatically creates a new untitled document, which means that this is a completely new file and you can't accidentally override the original. One of Photoshop's best hidden features is that you can use the eyedropper tool to sample colors from any application outside of Photoshop. Simply minimize the application frame, click inside the canvas and drag out. Notice that as I drag over my browser, Photoshop selects those colors. I'll hover over the blue and notice that it's now the foreground color in Photoshop. I can now expand the application frame and use the brush tool to paint with blue. You probably already know that under the type menu, there is a match font feature. This feature allows you to look at an image to find the font that it utilizes. All you need to do is drag the handles on this selection box to select the text you would like Photoshop to analyze and you will see the results here on the right side. But we have a couple problems. Number one is the previews are quite small and in some cases quite blurry. Also, I can't preview the font with my own custom text and I really would like to do that. So what do we do? Luckily, Photoshop already has this feature built in. It's just hidden. Let me show you where it is. Go into Window and from here, choose Libraries. From the Libraries panel, click on this plus icon and choose Extract from Image. This will open up this dialog box that allows you to do five things with your image. You can create patterns, vector shapes, color themes, and gradients. To be quite frank with you, I rarely use those features, but the feature that is very useful is the type feature, which allows you to find the font used in an image. All you have to do is place the selection box over the text, much like we did in the earlier example, then click on find similar fonts. Notice that this time Photoshop actually read the word that we highlighted and shows it in the preview. The preview is much larger and a lot easier to see. Also, we can click on this drop down and we can enter our own text or use one of the sample sentences. In this case, we're going to enter our own text and I'm simply going to type in the word Photoshop. And as you can see, that word is displayed on all the fonts. Select the one you like best, then save it to your CC libraries. You can save it as a character style or a paragraph style. In this case, a character style works and I'll click on save to CC libraries. I'll now close this panel and you will see the capture character style number one here. And I can apply that to any text layer with this text layer that reads Photoshop. I'm simply going to click on this character style. And as you can see, it applies the font. And of course, I can style it with the taskbar. I'll make the font larger and the text black. If you're looking for a powerful laptop built for creative work, check out the MSI Creator A16 AI Plus. It features a lightning fast AMD Ryzen 9 processor, a stunning 16 inch 4K mini LED display with 1000 nits of brightness and a 120 Hertz refresh rate. Perfect for color accurate designs, video editing and Photoshop work. Plus, with up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and an NVIDIA RTX 4070 graphics card, it handles demanding projects with ease. The MSI Creator A16 AI Plus is the laptop I use when creating on the go. Check out the link in the description for all the details. Photoshop hides a lot of their brushes. Let me show you where. You can click on this down pointing arrow and you'll see the installed brushes that you have. If you click on this gear icon, you'll notice the legacy brushes option. This will restore the brushes that have been in Photoshop forever. For some reason, they're hidden now and you can see that they are right here under legacy brushes. When you open up that brush group, you will see so many more brushes that you can use. These are all the brushes that have been inside of Photoshop for decades. But this is not the only place where you'll find hidden brushes. If you go into the gear icon, you can also click on get more brushes. This will open up a browser and if you scroll down, you will see several brush packs. All you need to do is click on the download button and download the ABR files to your computer. By the way, brushes is not the only thing that Adobe is hiding. If you go into window and choose shapes, 
you can also add the legacy shapes that were inside of Photoshop in the past. Notice that I have a new folder here with hundreds of shapes that you can utilize at any moment. The same thing is true for styles. If you go into the style window and from the flyout menu, click on legacy styles and more to get all the styles that were hidden. And you can apply any of these styles to the currently active layer just by clicking on them. Here's another hidden feature that I really think you'll enjoy. Click on the discover panel icon. This is the loop icon here on the right and make sure you're in the discover panel homepage. You can click on the home button here. If you scroll down to the area that reads hands-on tutorials, you will see a list of tutorials that I created and you can follow along with here under the photo effects category. When you open that up, notice the tutorials that I created. Most of these are mine. For example, the add a colorful dual lighting effect to a portrait. When you click on that, you will see my name, my photo, and you can click on start tutorial. What that will allow you to do is see my coach marks over your Photoshop interface telling you what to do. For example, click on the small black and white squares to set the default foreground and background colors. Once you click on that, Photoshop will automatically display the next coach mark. In this case, select subject. Go into the select menu and choose subject. Then it's asking me to create a group and create a mask on that group based on that selection. Every now and again, you will have to click the next button, which is found here in the discover panel. So I'll click on next and I'll create a black and white adjustment layer, just like it's telling me to do. I'll click on next and move on to create a gradient map. Then Photoshop is asking me to edit the gradient map editor and make the white part light blue. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll open it up and make this white area light blue. That looks pretty good. I'll press OK and I'll click on the next button like the coach mark is telling me to do. Next, it's asking me to change the blending mode to hard light. I will go ahead and do that. And this looks more like a light hitting this man. And now it's telling me to set the opacity to about 90%. And this is looking fantastic. Now it's asking me to enable the brush tool and adjust the brush size to about 150. Hardness at zero and click next to continue. Photoshop is now telling me to hide the bright areas on the right side by painting over the mask with black, which is my foreground color. I'm doing that and this looks fantastic. I'll click on next one more time and I'll duplicate the layer by going into layer, new, layer via copy and go into image, adjustments, invert to invert the mask and now make this blue into red. So I'll go ahead and open that up change the color to red and press OK. And at this point, I've completed the tutorial. So make sure that you open the Discover panel now to follow along with my tutorials inside of Photoshop. And if you made it this far, like and subscribe.